Hi, Jace here. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you want to know a bit more about refrigeration and how it actually cools and heats and pumps heat around. So yeah, I'll explain that in this vid. Um, let's do this. So here we have a fridge, mmm, some yummies in there. So as you can see, we've got what's called an evaporator and it's nice and cold. Thermostat sensor file to shut off and on the compressor whenever it wants to do it. So all, all refrigerators, air conditioning units and heat pumps, well, are essentially heat pumps. So if I move this fridge. So, the reason I'm looking at this little fridge up in the office is because it's so basic, there's nothing to it. There's nothing in that box apart from mains cable joined together. <laughs> Thermostat cable goes up and back down to give this a command to come on and off. And there's a power supply to the light bulb, and that's it. So, you've got a compressor. Um, as you can see, it's charged with R600A, which is isobutane refrigerant. Very nice. It's basically lighter fluid, what you find in your, in your gas lighter to light your cigarettes with. And this little compression area is a compressor. That's a charging port, that goes nowhere inside there. This one is the discharge port, and this one is the suction port. Again, this suction port goes nowhere. It just goes inside this tin can. However, this one attaches to the power head of the compressor. So what we do, so the compressor inside here, inside this pot, sucks from the surrounding pot area and then it blows out of this tube. So this tube has got a one-way check valve, it can only pump this way. So what happens is, now you can't see a condenser on this fridge because it's actually built into the side. But um, basically this will go into a condenser, as you can see it goes up into that side wall. And you'll basically have pipes running like this up and down and you, if you feel that side wall it's actually nice and warm that's all the heat that's escaping out the fridge so what it does it pumps up this um, discharge line through the condenser and this is the return of the condenser and all this part is is a filter and dryer so it's got those little gel balls inside it you know like when you buy a new pair of shoes it's got the little packet of gel balls inside it well it's got them silica balls sorry and then a little filter just to stop little bits getting stuck in this capillary line and then the gas actually runs through this capillary line and the reason it's so thin is because it's a metering device a capillary line is like a basic metering device now you can get TXVs and uh, electronic metering devices and throttle devices which uh, throttle the amount of uh, refrigerant that can go through the metering device but obviously this one is a fixed level you can overcharge it if you want some more uh, gas going through or undercharge it if you want less gas going through but generally this is going to give a fixed uh, level there's no there's no throttling in it I mean if you wanted to decrease the throttle you could crush a little bit of it there and that you know but that's stupid um, so basically the, the capillary line is there purposely to create a restriction once the restriction is created because this discharge line is blowing much faster than it can get through this line a high pressure will build up in the comp in the condenser and when you've got a high pressure on something it wants to condense down into a liquid and it will expel its heat now the capillary runs up to that cold plate at the back and it's and it then becomes a larger pipe which goes round the evaporator and back down through the through the return line which sucks back in so it goes around in a big circle all the time through the com through the condenser in the side back from the condenser to the dryer, through the metering device, up to the cold plate, the evaporator, through the evaporator, and back through the discharge line. And when it hits the, because this is suction, uh, because this is sucking, if it was an R134 compressor, this would be about atmospheric pressure, about zero bar. Just, just, uh, uh, you wouldn't read any pressure off of this. It would be around about the same as atmosphere. But with an R600, uh, we're running at about 15 inches of mercury in a vacuum. So this is under suction, and this is under high pressure. 
So actually then, when, when the gas comes out of the end of the capillary into the larger section, which is in a vacuum, it obviously boils straight away. It boils into a gas. And as it's boiling, it's really, really cold. So this R600 boils at about... It depends on the pressure. The lower the pressure, the colder it will boil. So that's why with every refrigerant, which I'll show you in a minute, it's got a temperature to pressure chart. So the hot, the higher pressure you get a gas to condense at, the hotter the condenser will be. Um, obviously, you don't want it too high because you'll kill your compressor. But the colder, uh, and oh, sorry, and it, and it works the same in the evaporator. The lower the pressure you can get that evaporator, the colder the gas will evaporate at. So now, what happens inside the evaporator? So the capillary metering device enters the evaporator. So it's under high pressure. Not as high as the start of the capillary as it's moving through, but as it squirts out of the end of that um, capillary's thinny line into the cold white plate at the back of the fridge, it becomes then a low pressure. So it, as it sucks, as it gets sucked along, it's boiling, and as it's boiling, it's freezing cold. You know, like when you um, when you're gassing up your gas lighter and you spill a little bit and it, it freezes your thumb. You know, when you're refilling your lighter, well, that's because the gas in the canister is in a high pressure state, but when you're when you're getting it out of the canister and it goes to a lower pressure state, i.e. the atmosphere, it boils really quickly, it'll boil into a gas. So it's held in a liquid inside the canister and then it boils into a gas when you let it out of the canister. So, and that's why it's really, really cold. It gives you a little freeze burn. You're like, ooh. Um, yeah, so that's what's happening inside your fridge. That cycle just basically continues and continues. But that cold bit of ice will just run through the evaporator. Um, second law of thermodynamics, pretty much just says anything with energy, with more energy than anything with less energy, uh, the energy will be transferred to the lesser energy state. So oh, I'm not explaining this very well. Um, what, what heat is, is energy inside something. So the particles are vibrating. When, when you remove heat from something, you're just removing the energy. So Basically, what we're doing is, in the evaporator plate, we're removing the energy from that so that the air inside the fridge hits it, has more energy. So that energy is sucked out of that air and the air becomes cold. But that energy has to go somewhere, right? You can't destroy energy, you can only move it or transfer it. So the energy gets is, is sucked into the gas, comes back around, and as it's blown into the condenser, because it after it's after it's superheated and it comes into the condenser it then travels through the condenser and the pressure gets greater so the um, the heat energy is released as the as the liquids condensing and becomes a subcooled liquid all that energy has been released and you're now back at room temperature and it goes all the way back around the cycle again so let's go and have a look at it in action so let's take a little look inside here, so that's our charging port. Um, this is our discharge, this fat one there, and that's our suction. So we've got two lots of them. That pipe, follow my finger, that pipe comes up here and into this RS21 condenser that I've built, and then out the other end. And the other end is this one, right? Here's the other end, comes so it goes in that one and out of this one. So it goes, sorry, in that one, through there, then through here and back out of this one. Then it comes to the filter dryer, right? Through the dryer, through the filter, into the capillary line. So just a quick look at the equipment that we use in the refrigeration industry. That's a compound gauge and it just gives you a, uh, and, and there we, we were talking about the um, pressure to temperature relationships of certain refrigerants, there's R134A and what it's basically saying is uh, at zero PSI it's running at about minus 28 degrees C see that? the green scale and then at 20 degrees at 20 PSI positive pressure you're running at about minus 5 degrees C which is probably where we want this to run and this one here is, is a millibar gauge, that's just for measuring vacuum. So if I was to sort of take that up, it, that's a full vacuum and that 1000 millibar is uh, 
pretty much atmospheric pressure. All right, and then, and that, that's just a little rig I like to use, but you might also have seen them in this type of form. So, what we do is one, one system at a time, just plug into each one. Make sure it's nice and tight. The first thing we need to do is get rid of all the gas. So what I'm gonna do is bring you over to the gauges now. Because so the other thing I like about this gauge, little cluster, it's got its own little vacuum pump built into it, which is pretty cool. Right, so if I, every, every, every manifold has got like, you know, gate uh, valves to shut off and let gas in for where you want it and stuff like that. Um, right then, so let's evacuate this. So that this tap for the, that's, that's for the actual vacuum pump, so that's closed at the moment. So, and all this tap is, is for the millibar gauge. This yellow hose is positive, this yellow hose here is positive pressure with gas, but that's shut off. So I'll leave that there. Um, and now I'm gonna open the line to the red pipe. And you see how quickly that's gone down? That's simply because on the end of that hose, there's a tap. So I'm just gonna open that tap now. And now we're opening up into the right hand compressor. So there it goes. So that that's now sucking down all the sucking out all the air from that right hand compressor, evaporator and condenser. So that'll take a, a good half an hour. Okay, so it's been half an hour. I'm quite happy that it's vacuumed down. It holds a nice vacuum. So now I'm going to shut off my gauge, shut off my pump. So I can turn that pump off, and I'm going to let some gas into the system. In it goes. So at the moment that's um, gas, and if I turn it upside down like that, it's a bit of a uh, liquid gas going in. You can see it rushing in through the through the glass. So I don't know how much this will take. So I'm actually going to gas it on the pressures. So this little unit I actually use for doing warranty fridges that are R600, believe it or not. That's still done these days, and so this gauge isn't used, <laughs> it's just uh, leaks out of here, um, but it does show me bar, so I can, so we're at 2.5 bar, and this one doesn't show bar. Great. <laughs> What's this, um, oh no, that's R12, my goodness. Oh, it does show bar, it's in the red. Right, so 2.5 bar is um, just above uh, 35 PSI, about 35 PSI. That's cool. Um, probably let a little bit more in. What we want the R134 to run at at five degrees would be, if we look it up on the scale here, that's minus 10 and that's zero, so five would be, so we want this running at between two bar and one bar. One bar would be a bit too cold at minus 10. That's just gonna freeze up the evaporator in no time. And zero degrees isn't really gonna cool the room sufficiently. So I want it about minus five degrees, which is, I'm gonna say uh, 1.5 bar between the one and the two. So I'm gonna run the system at 1.5 bar. So actually when that compressor's running, I want this pressure to go down to 1.5 bar. Now what we're, what we're hooked onto is the low side. So at the moment, this is an equalization pressure. So as soon as I power up this system, you'll see that needle drop. So keep your eye on this gauge, because you can see that's plugged into the service port here. Turn on the compressors. And you can see the pressure dropping. Beautiful. So I'm gonna, so as you can see from the compound gauge, there's not nearly enough, oh, not nearly enough gas in there, that scared me then, I'm gonna drop that. 